Good morning everyone, I'm Sarah and you're very welcome to my channel So Me Sarah which is a channel mostly about cross stitch and sometimes some other needle arts as well. I am delighted to welcome you here to my channel today. It is Friday the 10th of February 2023 and today I'm going to do a little bit of chatting about um, some fabric, about my stitching, just a little bit about my stitching. Um, and I'm going to share some uh, spotlight on some spring patterns and Easter patterns that are in my stash. So there is a reason for this, <laughs> um, for this, in that it is slightly different format from usual. I will not be sharing all of the whips that I've worked on in the last couple of weeks um, this time, mainly because I've been very busy. I haven't had a huge amount of time and the progress on those whips is very small. It is still progress and I'm happy with that but I thought since I don't have great progress to show you I would chat about a few other things that have come up or that have been mentioned by viewers or um, just things that have been in my head. So today's video will be a little bit more chat perhaps less stitching. If that's not for you I totally understand. You could put me on in the background and just keep stitching away and maybe you never know I might have something that would interest you but um, but if today's video doesn't interest you then I hope you'll join me again next time and hopefully I will have more of my own stitching progress to share with you. Since last time I, um, I have had lots of lovely comments about Charlotte's return to the video she is a superstar and um, she hogs the limelight and mommy is jealous. <laughs> no, not really. Um, but it's been lovely. Thank you very much for your comments that show that you are glad to have seen her again. It has been a little while. Um, there are two main reasons for that. Um, the first is really that I can't pin her down and she doesn't want to come and do what mommy wants her to do. <laughs> um, so she does love to record herself on the video. Um, but you have to catch her at the right moment. So generally when she's in the house, she's busy you know, doing something else and I can't um, entice her my direction. But mostly I actually video when she's out <laughs> just so that I get peace and quiet to do it. Um, so it was really nice last Sunday, or two, two Sundays ago, when I was able to uh, have her join me. She had um, come in from her walk with daddy um, just while I was still recording because as you remember you may remember I had to do a double record that day um, so the silver lining to all of that was that Charlotte was on screen for a few minutes and um, talking nonsense and I totally misinterpreted what she said because I've had this um, throat and nose and ear thing for a wee while for about nine weeks now actually <laughs> um, but I'm a wee bit blocked and I don't always hear everything so I didn't hear her say that she was talking about eating her scones um, she told me that she stole daddy's cherries i thought she just was saying daddy was eating the cherries but she when i let when i played it back i could hear it i just couldn't hear it when she was on my knee because my well, yeah my hearing is a bit funny at the moment and um, but yeah she liked it felt great pleasure in the fact that she had stolen the cherries out of daddy's scone <laughs> So she was happy to chat and uh, to blether, as we say, <laughs> and um, and it was lovely that you appreciated seeing her again. Thank you so much for welcoming her on the channel. Um, I had a weekend away last weekend, which was really lovely. Um, it was two nights away up the north coast of Northern Ireland, up in in a little village called um, or a little town called Port Stewart. Um, it has magnificent beaches there um, and sand dunes that are protected by the National Trust. So um, yeah, it's it's beautiful. And we were very lucky with the weather. Saturday was a little bit changeable, but that was okay. We stayed in on Saturday morning. We had a lazy breakfast, and then we made some of the um, project bags by um, from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch's fabulous tutorial. So I will link that tutorial below if you're interested. It's the first time I've actually made the bags from that tutorial. Um, I know that the tutorial is highly regarded in the cross stitch community, so you're not wrong, you guys who already have um, commended the tutorial. Um, I've never made project bags quite in that way. Um, I've made lots of project bags, but none quite in, in that with that method. Um, but it worked really, really well, and we all had project bags um, by 
lunchtime on Saturday. So that was really good. We got out in the fresh air for a great walk along the beach on Sunday. So I'll just pop a couple of pictures in. I have shown this area before, but um, this is called Port Stewart Strand. And it is, um, as I said, it's protected by the National Trust. And the views were just beautiful. For February, we got really lucky with the weather because it can be very, it can be bitterly cold up there with wind coming in from the North Atlantic. Um, so yeah, it was fabulous on Sunday. There was sunshine and it was, I mean, we were wrapped up in our hats and scarves and gloves, but we were quite comfortable. We weren't, we weren't uh, blown apart or we didn't have stinging faces from the, the freezing cold wind so it was gorgeous it was good to blow the cobwebs away for a day or two and have some great company and good laughs and good food and stitchy time so yeah all good and thanks very much to Hobby for holding the fort at home to allow me to do that so when when we were away as I said we made project bags and I told you I was going to make one to house my afternoon tea pattern that hubby bought me for Christmas. And I had some lovely afternoon tea fabrics. And this is my project bag. So this is fabric I've had for quite some time. I can't remember the, um, the designer or the name, sorry. Um, but it's, um, I don't think it's available anymore. I know that um, a few years ago, or last year, I tried to get a little bit more and it was hard to get. But anyway, it's perfect for housing the afternoon tea project. And I'm chuffed. <laughs> These are my little tags, the little, um, little key safe tags. And I just put the name of my project on just in case you're wondering what that is dangling away there. So really pleased with how this turned out. I was so pleased that I made more <laughs> and I have two more bags. I have another one with similar fabrics. I just changed the placement and I used a little bit of contrast because I didn't have enough of this one to, um, to use on the top. So I just used another contrast, a lovely piece of gingham. So that's a second afternoon tea bag. And then I had a piece of this fabric, which I can't remember. It's a Laurie Holt fabric. Can't remember which um, line it's from, but the fabric is made to look like cross stitch samplers, as you can see. And I thought, well, that would be just perfect for a cross stitch project bag. And I held on to it and held on to it until I was making project bags. So obviously I was making them last week. And when I cut my fabrics, for going away for the weekend, I cut these as well so that I could stitch them up quickly then on return. So a little bit of gingham on the back. And um, the fabric that I have, oops, excuse me. <laughs> so as I was saying, <laughs> the fabric that I have on the inside, not on the back, but on the inside, um, it looks plain, but it's actually mottled, um, but it's um, called Shadow and Stone. It was um, a blender from many, from a long time ago, and I had some leftover um, from a quilt. So I was able to get enough pieces for it, um, for all three of the bags. So I had to piece some of the inside, but it's in the lining, so you won't, you won't really bother about that. So um, I'm really pleased. I've got a few new pretty project bags and I have one for you. <laughs> so I made three but I'm going to keep two of them and I am going to give away this one, this afternoon tea type bag. So if you don't want to listen to all of my blether <laughs> then skip to the end and you will get the details for entering the giveaway for this. Um, but maybe you'll bear with me in the meantime anyway. So I was also very lucky when I came home from my weekend away to receive a Happy Mail parcel. And the Happy Mail came from Nancy from the Bougie Stitchers. Um, Nancy, I'm sorry I didn't ask your name, but I'm sure you'll be okay. Uh, sorry, ask your permission to share your name. Sorry. 
um, but I'm sure you'll be okay with that. Nancy uh, very kindly sent Charlotte and I a thank you gift for her birthday cheer that we did for her um, back in the autumn time. So she very kindly sent some stickers for Charlotte and coloring activity book. And look, it's called Fancy Nancy. <laughs> thank you, Nancy. She loves them and, um, and she will be happy making a mess with those, yes. <laughs> And Nancy very kindly included this gorgeous, gorgeous project bag and a thread bed. I think that's what these are called. I've never had one. So thank you, Nancy. This is my first one. Can you see this fabric? It says time to stitch on it. And open it up and it's lovely. And the project bag itself has, um, I don't know if you can see, oh yeah. There you go. You see the lining says love in little cross stitches. That's the design on the fabric. Isn't that pretty? And then time to stitch. So the label on here says Como stitches. Can you see Como stitches? So perhaps you can check that out. It might be an Etsy store. Beautifully made project bag. Nancy, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to putting a special project in here and um, one that will remind me of you because you are a true sweetheart. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, that's kind of everything all caught up, I think. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is share a little snippet of video with you that um, was a request from one of the viewers. So, Someone asked if I would show how I stitch in a scroll frame because I, I show my whips from time to time and you know that I have some of them in scroll frames. And so this person asked if I would show how, I can, how to stitch in the scroll frame or how I stitch in the scroll frame. So I don't pretend to any expertise at this at all. But I did, just before I started recording here, I went into the living room and I sat in my stitchy place and I recorded a little video, which I hope will give you a few hints and tips if you are trying to get used to stitching in a scroll frame. I'm just showing you how I do it. I'm sure there are lots of ways of doing it and my way won't be the only way or the perfect way. It might not even suit you, but I'm hoping that um, I might be able to help some of you along with your stitching in a scroll frame. So I will insert that little snippet here. Okay, so here I am in one of the stitchy spots that I have in my living room. It's this Sarah's stitchy spot, not the Sarah's stitchy spot. She is a whole other channel and a fantastic one, so go watch her. Uh, but this is one of my stitchy spots. This is my spot on the sofa. There's another spot just over there in the window, and that's where I stitch when the light is good during the daytime. So here in my stitchy spot, I have my arm, uh, my armchair tray, and I have an quart jar here and my scissors. I have my thread on this tray. Um, my pattern is on the tray today, but normally it's clipped to my light, which is back here at the moment, but I'll, I pull that round when I need it. And then on this tray, the most important thing of all is that I can balance my iPad and watch other floss tubers while I stitch. <laughs> so this is my setup here and my trusty cushion. So I always sit with a cushion on my lap pretty much all the time, whether I'm stitching or not. Um, it's a comfort, security, whatever psychology you want to read into that, but we'll, we'll not go there today. <laughs> anyway, I, um, I feel comfortable with a cushion on my lap. And it comes in very handy when I'm working with a scroll frame. So if you don't already use one while you're working with your scroll frame, you might find that it does help a little bit. And it helps because it raises the level of my lap. So you can't really see and you don't want to see, but it raises the level of my lap from down here to up here. And that means that I have something I can balance the scroll frame on a little bit to take some of the weight out of my arms and shoulders. So. I am going to do my best to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I hope that you can see. I will try to do it slowly um, so that you can have a look and see where my hands are, where I'm positioned. I'll try to explain it. 
this is not something I'm used to having to do, but I was asked by someone and I want to help um, if I can to give you a few tips as to how working in a scroll frame might be more comfortable for you. Now I do have a Lowry stand and my Lowry stand is down the side here and um, comes up and over across here and I can put the, the scroll frame on the Lowry stand. I like to use the Lowry stand when my, I'm feeling a lot of tension in my arms and shoulders or just before I when I know I'm getting to that point and to take the tension out but one of the things I don't like about any stand and this is not not um, not decrying the Lowry in any way but any stand is when you have to finish off threads at the back and you have to constantly flip and to, that drives me mad <laughs> so I'm not very um yeah, I'm not very adept at it, so it becomes a bit of a palaver for me. So I will not use the Lowry stand or any stands all of the time. But <clears throat> but you do know that I I switch about from in hand to in hoop to in a frame to on a stand. I have a little lap stand now, which I, I find useful. And I do find that varying my stitching technique um, does help with the hands and the you know, arms, especially since I am now these days doing much more stitching than I ever did before. Anyway, I digress slightly. Um, but if you if I'm working in a scroll frame with just the frame and hold by holding the frame, then there are a few tips that I could give you as to how I do it to suit me better. So holding the scroll frame like this can become very tiring. So that is why you would use a Lowry frame or something to hold it upright in this way <clears throat> and take the weight out of it. This can put quite a bit of stress on your wrist and your hands and it's just not comfortable to do for a long time. So when we're when I'm working with a scroll frame um, I need to find another position for it and um, something that is more comfortable and sustainable for a few hours of stitching. And this is where my handy dandy cushion comes in and I use it as a rest basically. So it takes the weight of one side of the scroll frame while I have the other side tilted up and I'm able to work my hand underneath here and then I can pull from the left hand. So I'm right handed, so I should have said. So I'll push from underneath with the right hand, pull up with the left, down again and pull back out with the right hand. <clears throat> Mostly I'll have um, the frame resting on the cushion and you'll also see that I have it resting here on kind of on my forearm here a little bit so that it's supported there just a tiny bit it's just sort of loosely there and sometimes it's a little bit up off the arm and sometimes it's right on the arm just depending on the position so I'm taking the weight of the frame out of my hands and down through the pillow the cushion and into and into this right arm as well just giving it a little bit of balance and support and then I can just stitch so I'm not going to pretend to show you <laughs> teach you how to stitch but you can see I can pull up with the right sorry the left hand and back down again at that point I'm going to hold on to the frame I usually don't hold it on the side I usually then hold it on the top and this is where you might want to grime guard for your fabric, just in case you don't like the idea of holding, touching your fabric all of the time. But I'm pulling down with the right hand, back up with the right and out with the left and back down again. And that is how I stitch in the scroll frame. There is no other magic <laughs> to this. Um, Sometimes I'll shift my hands around a little bit just depending on perhaps the angle I need to be to get a stitch but again if I can I find myself naturally don't actually not actually thinking about it but naturally seeking somewhere to rest the um the scroll frame just and it helps to take the weight it also helps to give it a little bit of balance if I were sitting at my dining room table <coughs> I would be doing much the same thing but the scroll frame would be resting on the dining table and that is um, a good way I find to be able to work at a table too. So I hope that that helps um, you to see how I work in the frame. I'm not holding it like this and 
um, and I'm not holding it upright so it's pretty much flat and I'm holding resting it and I'm just grabbing the top a little bit sometimes the side sometimes you know your hand will move depending on where you're stitching and where it's more convenient to hold but it does mean that um, that my arms my hands don't cramp up and my arms don't get so tired and my neck and shoulders aren't so badly affected either just by taking the weight out of it so that my body's not doing all the work I have some support underneath so I hope that made sense I hope it wasn't too waffly um, and I hope that you have fun experimenting with a good position for you and your scroll frame okay so today I'm going to share very briefly um, my progress on the real comfort which is the um, my daily thread piece and that is the um, the piece that I pick up every day that I stitch I start with and I put in one thread so I have already started this because I did the little video about stitching in the scroll frame so I have a thread hanging and um, I'm more like Sarah, <laughs> Sarah from Sarah's Stitchy Spot every minute. She always has her threads <laughs> as well. Um, so you can see that I have put in some more of the, the wording and I have brought these borders down around the bottom corners now. So they're soon to match up and then come down into, um, it's like a, a tree trunk column um, idea. So this is, the um, Jane Austen and Jane Austen sampler called Real Comfort by Modern Folk Embroidery. And I'm sorry, I need to get the picture out, but this is it. And I just wanted to show you because I have continued to put in a daily thread and it is making nice progress on this stitch. So that is my Real Comfort progress. And then when I went away last weekend, I took some cross stitch just for um, just for little fill in moments that I have but I knew that I wouldn't be able to chat and concentrate on anything complex so what I actually did was um, well I got inspired by Kathy Haberman's release of her latest anniversary stitch so you may or may not know but I'll tell you anyway <laughs> Kathy Haberman of Hands On Design has her wedding anniversary either on or in around Valentine's Day. And every year for her anniversary, she designs a little chart and she stitches it for her hubby and for her, um, and, and you know, as a memento for their anniversary. And um, she released this year's, which is beautiful. It's called Love You Too. If you haven't seen it, you might like to pop over to the Hands-On Design blog and, um, and find that. But when I saw it, I thought, oh yeah, I'll have to stitch that. And I will, but I'm not getting patterns at the moment. <laughs> but I do already have a number of Kathy's patterns in my stash. So every year she releases one of these patterns and she lets it, um, she lets us have it as a freebie. So these are on her blog. And actually, if you go this year to the post that she has, she has collated all of them on the one post. Previously, you had to go and search her blog in and around you know, the beginning of February every year to find um, all of those releases. But this year she has put them all on the one blog post, which is makes it so much easier for you to find. So I will try to link that below so that you um, can have easy access to those. Anyway, inspired by her new release, I thought I will take away to the weekend a couple of those small designs so that I can just stitch them in a, in a few minutes when we're chatting and having coffee or whatever. Um, and those will be manageable. So the first one I did was this one called Love is Kind. Just trying not to show the chart, but it is a freebie any, in any case. So it's called Love is Kind, and I stitched it on a scrap of Rustico Eda. It's an 18 count, and it's so simple, but it's so beautiful. So I'm pleased that that is one of my finishes. <laughs> I told you they were tiny. <laughs> and the other one that I took and stitched on a 36, 32 count linen. Um, it's a mystery linen, so I'm not sure what it is, but it is Spygart because the other piece has a, a Spygart salvage on it. 
um, is this one called L-O-V-E. So this is it, L-O-V-E, and this is my version of it. Now, believe it or not, the pink thread in the middle is not the same pink thread as I used for the border, but you can barely tell that they're different threads. <laughs> they looked quite different on the skeins, but um, anyway, it doesn't matter because it's lovely. <laughs> And I'm really, really thrilled to have these little smalls stitched up. There's a nice sense of achievement um, when you finish little smalls. So those were good stitches to take along to a chatty girly weekend away. <laughs> and that is, um, that's all the finishes that I have to show you. And as I said before, I'm not going to show you the other um, progress on my, on my regular whips because you've seen them and I didn't make a huge dent in them in the last couple of weeks. So one of the things I wanted to have a little chat about today um, has been on my mind and actually I did chat about it in my first record of the last video <laughs> but when I had to re-record the last video um, I didn't have time so I, I left it out. So I'm coming back to that now and that is to have a little chat about Zweigart Linen. So recently on floss tube. I've heard a, a couple of folks refer to bog standard Zweigart linen and, and they do very quickly correct themselves because they know that they're not really trying to downplay the Zweigart linen. Um, the linen that comes directly from Zweigart in the Zweigart colours and hasn't been over dyed by another linen dyer. So that's what we're talking about here is the bog standard Zweigart. And nobody meant to be detrimental, but there were a couple of comments um, over in the same in the same couple of weeks. I heard a number of of folks on Flosstube mention it, and I realised that we because because we're correcting ourselves, like oh no no, but I don't mean that it's bad or anything like that. But there are kind of tiered levels of of the supplies that we use, of the threads that we use. Sometimes people refer to, oh, it's just DMC. Um, and nobody really means any harm by that. Um, but sometimes I think the, um, the overdyeds, the overdyed flosses and the overdyed fabrics get so much mention that the, the <laughs> you see, there isn't a way of describing it. The, the range that comes direct from the manufacturer in terms of the linen, the Zweigart linen, um, it gets a little bit overlooked and doesn't get as much chat on, on floss tube as I think it deserves. And there are some of us out here who don't have the budget for the fancy overdyes all the time. So for example, here in the UK, to buy a fat quarter of an overdyed linen will cost you around 25 to 30 pounds. But to buy a fat quarter of the Zweigart linen in a Zweigart colour is half that price, so around 12 or 13 pounds. That There's a big saving to be made <laughs> on, um, on that purchase. So I don't, I don't have a problem with anybody purchasing whatever they want. So this is not judging people who spend the extra money. That's not judging them in any way. All this is, all I'm trying to do is say, look, there is an alternative. Don't be put off linen if you can't afford that because I can't afford that all the time. I've been really blessed to have been gifted some overdyed linen. So I was gifted um, the beautiful um, fun fair piece with all the colors that I did the love, Fractor Love sampler on. And, um, and I was also gifted some fabulous Hand, hand dyed linen from um, a dyer um, in New Zealand and those pieces um, I don't know that I've shown them much because I don't think I that ha I have the pieces kitted um, I haven't maybe stitched terribly much on them yet um, a couple of small bits and pieces but I have the pieces of linen kitted and and they're beautiful they are really stunning and beautiful they're not always within our budget and quite frankly here in the United Kingdom they're not even within our reach quite often. We don't have very many LNS's, we don't have very many local needlework stores. If you're lucky you might have a hobby craft nearby but they really have you know um, just a very um, 
a very basic range. I'm not even sure there's always linen in the hobby craft, but they have they have nice Ada, but it's pretty much you know um, white or cream. Um, so we don't have access to LNSs where we can go in, have a look, see the differences in the hand dyed, over dyed fabrics, compare them, decide which ones we like. Now we can, I can order from the UK. There's a, there are a couple of shops where I can order hand dyed linen from, but I'm nervous to do that. And I think um, a lot of folks are. So I know that some of you have mentioned um, on a few of my previous posts that you were happy to hear me talk about things that were um, perhaps in terms of reduced budgets, you know, um, and, and doing this hobby with less money, you know. Um, I still spend plenty, don't get me wrong, and I will, I will someday buy beautiful hand dyed linen, but I would like to see it, hold it, see exactly what the colour is before I commit that kind of spend. So it's, it's too risky, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say, is there's a risk involved in spending that amount of money on a fabric I'm not sure about. I have never seen in real life. And I know that, that other folks show them here on their floss tubes, but things always look different in real life. <laughs> So for me, there's a risk in that, and it's like, mm, and I'm too nervous to spend it. Um, I will do one day, so, you know, this isn't, I'm not setting rules, I'm not, and I'm really, please understand, I'm not trying to judge anyone. All I'm trying to do here today is say, there is an alternative, and the alternative is beautiful. <laughs> so for me, the alternative is to order the Zweigart linen. And maybe a year, year and a half ago, early on in my floss tube journey, I didn't stitch on linen really um, because it was expensive to buy and someone pointed me in the direction of the Spygart pre-cuts and I'm so glad that they did because you know they are more expensive than Ada yes but they're linen you know so they're going to they're going to be just as the overdyed is going to be more expensive than the Spygart pre-cuts so it stages but I was so glad that someone told me about these pre-cuts and someone told me where I could get them. So I buy my Spygart pre-cuts from a website in the UK called Wool Warehouse. Now, as it sounds, Wool Warehouse is largely wool <laughs> and, and they do fantastic wools and supplies and, and all of that, but they have um, more recently developed their needle craft section and they have Ada's and even weaves and linens on there as well as um, DMC threads and things like that. So when you buy a pre-cut, it comes like this, all packaged in a little envelope. And they have, um, they do have um, some DMC linens and things that I, that I haven't tried. So today I'm specifically talking about Spygard. And just to be clear, Nobody's sponsoring me. Wool Warehouse isn't sponsoring me. Swigard isn't sponsoring me. I'm just trying to um, give you some hints and tips as to where you might access. <laughs> and this is where I found to be a good, reliable source and good price. So I'm sure you can get it elsewhere. I know sometimes if I look on Amazon, um, some of the sellers on Amazon are, are selling the pre-cuts. Um, although do be careful because some of them are some of them are pricier there, but anyway, that's just a, a, little, <laughs> a little aside. Um, anyway, this is how your pre-cut comes and they come as fat quarters. Now the wool warehouse also sells um, off the bolt, but they tend to only have one or two colors. So there might be a white, a cream and an antique white um, off the bolt. Uh, so if you want a bigger piece, you can get that, but not perhaps in the range of colors. They have a really nice range of colors in, um, well, in all of their, all of their Spygard pre-cuts. So whether that's Ada or Evenweave or Linen, they have a lovely range of colors. Um, I, I especially like the colors that they have in their Murano actually, but we're not talking about Murano today, we're talking about the Linen. So for $11.99, you can get a fat quarter of this Belfast linen or a fat quarter of the Edinburgh linen, which is the 35 count they call it. So and the Belfast is a 32 count. 
and um, mostly I have purchased um, neutral shades but I just wanted to give you an idea here are uh, my Belfast linens so you can see this pale cream flax this one is called plein air which is French for outside for open air um, it's a very very pale aqua and it's beautiful this I think is platinum let me just check yes platinum oops again this one is gorgeous this one is called silk and then this is the sparkle that I'm using for um, Glitter Village, which is Sparkle Natural Silver. So you can see that, it, you know, I have a range of neutrals, um, but there are other colours listed on the site. And one of those is um, this blush. Can you see this very pale pink, which is gorgeous? And I'm stitching um, Things Unseen on it. I love this pale pink. Really, really love it. Um, there's also a deeper aqua, um, so let me see, I showed you the plant air, which is the one that fell, I think, yeah, excuse me, so this is plant air, oh, I bet she knows, and this one is aqua, so let me see if I can show, if you can see the difference, so you can't. You can maybe just about see. Plant air is not as deep an aqua. And I'm stitching Alice in Wonderland on the aqua. So that's the blush and the aqua. Like so. And I have this beautiful piece of platinum to show you. I just, I, this one is already out. And it is getting ready for the um, Rejoice Evermore sale, which starts on Tuesday, on Valentine's Day. So this is Platinum. The Platinum is a fabulous sampler colour. Um, but of course, we all have different tastes. But I just, I wanted to show you that these are perhaps the basic Spygart ranges. But they're beautiful and they are a delight to stitch on. Look at that linen. And it's no coincidence that most of the fabric dyers, the good fabric dyers, are over dyeing on Spygart because it's a fabulous base linen. So I, um, I, I guess I just wanted to share with you that there is another option out there and it is beautiful too. You could also order off the bolt Spygart and try your hand at dyeing yourself. So I have a little bit of... Um, I have a little tutorial back, I think it's floss tube extra number six maybe, um, about dyeing with dylon fabric, or dylon dye, fabric dyes. Um, so you could have a little go um, trying that yourself if um, you fancy it. It's also just fun trying to come up with colours. I have um, I've done it a couple of times. I would like to do more, but I kind of, I, you know, don't get the time. And as you can see, I'm quite well stocked <laughs> with my linens. So I wanted you to see that the pre-cuts are available. They are less of a risk. So if I, yeah, I don't know exactly what this color looks like when I order it either. Um, but it's 12 pounds, not 25 or 30 pounds that I'm taking the risk with. So um, one day when I get into an LNS and they have a range of hand-dyed fabrics that I can hold and see, then I will maybe be prepared to take the risk. Although I would be prepared to take the risk on some fox and rabbit. I know that there are colors in there that I would love, even if they don't turn out as I expect, I think I'd still love them. <laughs> so anyway, enough, enough waffling and boring you. I hope that that has given, if you didn't know where to buy linen, um, and it is probably uh, particularly a UK issue. <laughs> um, if you didn't know where to buy it, now you know you could go to the Wool Warehouse, you could try some of their pre-packaged. And as I said, they also have the Ada and the Murano and Lugana as well. And they have some lovely DMC even weaves too. Um, so I've tried lots of those and I've been very happy with all of them. So it's just another option for us here 
in the UK, and maybe also in the US. I don't see US stitchers talking so much about um, these, although no one is talking much about these. Everyone's talking about the overdides. Um, but hopefully you could get hold of these in the US somewhere too. So that's my little update on linens, my little two cents worth. Um, and now I need to issue an enabling alert. <laughs> so as you know, I'm trying to stitch from stash this year and back in the conversations in the comments about that, someone said, well, you know, if you're stitching from stash, maybe you could share your stash with us and show us what patterns are in your stash. So I did share some of the patterns that I hope to stitch this year, some of those ones that are in my stash, but yes, I do have more stash patterns than those. And okay, I am going to share them on the proviso that you don't count them. <laughs> You don't tell me what the numbers are <laughs> and I'm going to share them um, in groups. So, so today I'm going to have a little look at the patterns that I have for spring and for Easter. I don't need to know the number because if I know the number I'm quite possibly going to have to have another couple of years without pattern purchasing. <laughs> so we don't need to do any counting, okay? <laughs> so Let's have a little look at the patterns that are in my stash for spring and Easter because we're coming up. Hopefully you're maybe beginning to see signs of spring if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, obviously not if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, but as we are in the Northern Hemisphere and we're hopeful for seeing signs of spring, snowdrops, daffodils, all of that. Um, and moving out of the colder weather, although I suspect there's a little bit more still ahead for us, but it's nice to plan ahead and start thinking about the stitching. So I have two finished objects that I am um, for spring that I could show you. The first one is Language of Flowers by the Blue Flower. Sorry, it's Language of Flowers Spring by the Blue Flower. Sun shines when I'm with you. This is a piece of uh, linen. No, it's not. It's a piece of Ada that I over dyed. It turned out a very peculiar colour. I tried to fix it and it became even more peculiar. But when I was looking for some fabric for this design, I thought it worked very nicely. So, and I have it just backed as a little, a little pillow with some orange fabric, orange floral fabric. So, daffodils are spring. And this one is a very cute pattern. So that is the blue flower, the language, language of flowers, spring. Then I have this humongous <laughs> stitch, which is spring. And it's the tiered trays by um, Madame Chantilly. You will see that I like my series, my, my seasonal series. So I have a number now of, of sets of spring, summer, autumn, winter designs. Most of them, if they've been started at all, only have one stitch, so I don't actually have a full series of anything stitched. Um, but that's what happens when you get enabled by floss tube and you see all the shiny things and you want to stitch them all. So this is the only one of uh, these designs that I have stitched, but I do have the other, the other three months in them in stash um, and I'll show you in another time what those ones are. So this one, I think I stitched this one on the, yeah, so 16 count it is, so it is quite a big piece. I didn't realize when I started these just quite how big they are, but they're very pretty. Lots of little spring elements. You've got your lily of the valley and hyacinth and daffodils and roses and sheep and a shepherdess and tweety birds and rabbits all the spring things and the lovely magpie up at the top. I think he's a magpie. Anyway, so that is another option for you for spring stitching. And then um, into my into the stash. So I pulled out the patterns that are spring related. This one I am going to have to insert because there's no picture. This is Hello Petal. 
Again, it's a series, um, a seasonal series. This is by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Here it is. I have stitched the autumn one, the Hello Pumpkin, and I have all four of the seasons that I want to stitch. Beautiful designs, really fun to work on, and I'm sure you've seen lots of people have them and have, and lots of people have finished them. Um, but this is the spring one called Hello Petal. So one day. <laughs> Then I have a freebie for you, and this is Crosetta Go Go. I'm going to hold it back a little bit because there's no picture, there's just the chart, but it is a freebie on her blog, and I will link it below. So it's a spring cottage. Again, she has um, she has all four seasons of these: spring, summer, autumn, winter, and there's a Christmas cottage, and there might even be another one, but I'm I can't I can't be 100% certain, but I know that I have five. I have the Four Seasons and Christmas and um, of course I, when I saw them, beautiful because I love the Croset A Go Go designs. Um, Marilla does a beautiful design job on every, every chart that she has um, and someday I would like to stitch them. I just don't know when that someday is going to be but if you fancy it, here's a spring freebie for you from Croset A Go Go. Um, I have this spring from Spring Buffalo Plaid or Buffalo Plaid Spring by the Housewives, Stitching with the Housewives. This was in a Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher magazine, Spring 2021. So I have the um, e version of it, and that's really very pretty. Again, they did all the seasons, so they have buffalo plaid, summer, autumn, winter. Again, one day, you're gonna hear a lot of the one day. <laughs> another um, another design by Priscilla. Um, this one is Flower Market. I thought that would be beautiful for spring. That's one of their tiered tray tidbits that they released, I think, last year. Very cute little pink truck with all the flowers on it. And then this one, which I think I maybe won in one of their giveaways. And I love snow globes. So this is perfect snow globe for spring tulips. It's called Snowed in Bloom. So just giving you an idea of some of the things that I have like some of the spring patterns I've liked and have wanted to add to my stash. Another series, here comes, this is one of my very favorites. I haven't started these ones at all, but this is Janine McGowan of the Blue Flower, Seasons of the Heart Spring. This is from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. If you have it, it's in 2021 spring as well. If you don't have the magazine, you can now buy these patterns, all four of them, all four seasons, um, from uh, from your LNS or online supply or Janine herself. Um, but if you have the magazines, they were all four seasons were released in the magazines um, over 2021, 2022. And I love it. I saw someone stitching the winter one yesterday on Instagram and it really made me want to have a go pull them out and make a start but I have to refrain <laughs> but it's in my stash so I could anytime I wanted to without breaking the rules this year <laughs> so that is um, another of my favorites this one is called Starlings and it is a pattern by Isle Forest Design and I think it will be perfect for spring I think it's very sweet Spring, Valentine, love is in the air, all of that. All forest embroidery. Um, I have two more blue flower patterns here. I do love the blue flower. Um, this pattern was gifted to me by my friend Margaret and is called Wild Flowers. And I think that's a beautiful spring, possibly even summer design. And then this one was a freebie um, that was released. I think this was released during um, the, the COVID lockdowns in 2020. I believe there was a, like a Be Well. 
there were a number of designers who got together and released some freebie charts. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly. But Janine from the Blue Flower released this one called Let Joy Be Unconfined. Um, I am going to hold it back because there's no picture. I only have the chart, but it is a freebie and you will be able to find that. And I'll try and put a link to it down below. Um, I saw on, I think perhaps her most recent video, um, Janine has her own floss tube. Um, on her floss tube, she has a little segment where she will show uh, other stitchers stitching of her designs. So um, if you have stitched one of Janine's designs, you can send her the photographs and she will put it onto her, on this little slot on her floss tube and she'll put it onto her, um, her website as well. And it just shows other folks how her designs have been stitched up. So this one anyway, let joy be unconfined is what I'm trying to say is I saw it stitched on one of her recent videos. One of her viewers had sent in their stitch. So this one is let joy be unconfined. And as is typical of Janine's designs, there's just so much detail and yeah, she, she misses nothing. I absolutely love Janine's design work. Um, these ones now that I have are a little bit more Easter oriented. There's just three of them to share with you. Another freebie for you. Um, these were the free charts for spring of 2021 by Whilst Iris Naps. Little bunnies and carrots. So cute. If you fancy stitching those for your Easter time, for your spring Easter displays. That would be a great one to go and find. Another Crosset A Go Go freebie. This one is, um, well, it's called Vogo di Pasca. Pasca is Easter. I'm not sure what Vogo is. Egg? Vogo egg? Maybe it's Easter egg. Anyway, forgive my Italian translation, but again, I only have the chart, not a picture, so I'll hold it back a little bit. It is a freebie and I will link it. So if you can see, it's an oval egg shape. So I think the word Pasca means Easter egg. So that is another cute, if you like chickens <laughs> and roosters in there. And then another housewives, stitching with the housewives. Again, from Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine in 2022 in the spring. This one is Bucket Brigade Easter all the usual cuteness of Priscilla's designs and Chelsea's stitching. So. Right, so those are the spring Easter charts that I have in my stash. You can see I have plenty to keep me going for a long time. Um, <laughs> we have fabulous designs at our fingertips, folks. And I, you know, I know that I'm not, I'm trying not to purchase this year, but that is not in any way to discourage others from purchasing or um, from supporting designers. And I want to do that too. I want to support designers. I just, I just need to catch up so that I can actually stitch the things because they have designed such beautiful things that I want to have in my home or I want to give to other people. Um, and yeah, I need to get at it. So anyway, it has been fun to share those with you. I have obviously more. Um, I hope nobody was counting. <laughs> I have more in my stash that I can share on various themes. If there is a particular theme that you would like to see my, my pattern stash for, um, please ask. Um, I will do my best if I have that. If I have patterns on that theme, I will do my best to pull those and suggest them for you. I did a little spotlight on Valentine's patterns last year. Um, so you might want to go back and have a look around February of last year if you are interested in the Valentine patterns. And there were quite a number of freebies in that um, in that little spotlight. Um, I know it's probably a little bit late for Valentine's this year, but you know, you know, it's always good to enhance, <laughs> enhance your pattern stash, she says, trying not to be an enabler, but enabling nonetheless. Um, it's good to know where you can access and sometimes it's nice just to see things you might not have seen before. Um, so 
so yes, as I said, if you have something in specific you would like me to pull patterns for to show in, a, in another future video, then then please let me know. I'm very happy to do that. And thank you to the viewer who suggested that we take a dip into my stash of patterns, since that is what I'm planning to do this year, is to work from that pattern stash. Okay, I think I probably waffled at you enough today. I hope that it's been interesting, informative, helpful in some degree. And I hope if it hasn't been, you've skipped over the bits that you didn't like. Um, I just want a quick reminder that we are starting the um, sal for Rejoice Evermore on Tuesday, which is Valentine's Day. Joanita from Stitchy Things and I are hosting this sal. We know that there are lots of you who are joining us and we're delighted about that. So excited to see everybody's progress. You know, where will you choose to start? Are you a center starter? Are you a top left, a bottom right? Where do you start? Have you chosen the cold for fabrics? Have you gone rogue and done your own thing? Have you Are you using the cold for threads? All of that. So I am ready with my beautiful platinum linen that I was showing you earlier. And last night I got my threads all sorted and I told you before, this is what I do. I put them on a car, on a little thread organizer. There's nothing tidy about my threads. <laughs> But here you go. These are the beautiful colors. So I am using all of the cold four losses for this design. Beautiful. And I have cut some lengths then and put them on here. And the rest are still on the skeins in here. This is how I do it. I put several lengths onto the thread card and that's what I work from. So I'm looking forward very much to starting on Tuesday, Valentine's Day. And um, please do join us if you want to. The hashtag is hashtag Rejoice Sal. And uh, you, Anita, and I will be posting on there. And I hope, I know that lots of you are planning to join with us. So if you follow the hashtag on Instagram, you'll get to see everybody's progress, see where they've started and see how much progress they make. This is not a race. It's, I, I would like to finish it in 2023 at some point. There's no deadline though. <laughs> I think Joanita would also like to finish hers in 2023. Um, and the main reason for that is because we probably would like to do a 2024 sale. <laughs> you know, so, um, but if, if it doesn't, you know, you don't have to be in a hurry and you don't have to keep up with anyone. It's not a competition. It's about enjoying the stitching. I know some folks have already started and then when they found out there was a sale, they're going to join us in the sale anyway. So that is perfectly okay. You don't have to have a brand new start to join us in the sale. If you've already started working on it and you just would like to share your pictures with a group of folks who are also working on it, then feel free to do that. So it is Brenda Gervais pattern, rejoice evermore. And we look forward to seeing you next week on Instagram, hopefully. Okay, guys. I did promise you as a reward for all of my jibber jabber <laughs> that I would do a giveaway today and the giveaway will be this beautiful, if I say so myself, <laughs> this beautiful um, project bag. So this was made to the um, tutorial by Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch and I have, well, there is a slight difference. Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch uses um, and interfacing but I have actually used wadding and quilted mine because I like quilted project bags. So this is a quilted project bag but in all other respects it is um, for the same as Elizabeth Ann's tutorial and it has a, a cream lining. It is slightly modelled as I showed before but um, it is cream. So if you would like an opportunity to win this I will send it anywhere at all. So if you are international from me, you're not in the UK, that's perfectly okay. You can enter the giveaway. I am happy to send it internationally. And um, as I said, there's still a delay on international posts. So it might just be a little bit, take a little bit longer to get to you if you happen to be an international winner, but enter nonetheless, and we will get it to you eventually. And Royal Mail are still experiencing some difficulties with International Post. So if you would like to win this, you can come from anywhere in the world. 
it would be lovely if you were a subscriber and please don't use any of the words like freebie giveaway winnings all of that don't use any of those words because it just attracts trolls and we know if you've been watching other floss tubes lately we know that the trolls are hard at work at the moment so don't use those kind of telltale words um, in your comments but just use the word t t e a in your comment if you would like to be in with a chance of winning this um, giveaway this project bag giveaway i will do a search um, the random uh, comment picker search for the word t um, just before my next video which will probably be in about two or three weeks time hopefully two weeks time and then um, the random comment picker will will choose a winner who has used the word t in their comments now if you've been watching other floss tubers you know that those trolls that are hard at work are commenting on your comments and telling you that you have won something and trying to get you to um, use another app to you know give away your details basically so i don't do that here on this channel if you are the winner of my giveaways and share aways i announce it on the next video I don't comment on your comment to tell you that. I comment on your comments just, you know, to have chit chat, but I don't go back and find your comment and say, oh, you are the winner of whatever. So you have to be watching here to find out that you are the winner. So just be aware of that, just in case. I mean, my channel isn't big enough. I don't think it's attracted any trolls of that nature, um, certainly yet. But just be aware that I won't be announcing winners through comments um, only on the videos themselves. So. Um, if you get a comment such as that, then just ignore it. Um, so whenever a winner is announced, then I ask you to contact me and, um, and, I, and I give you the means of doing that. So anyway, that's just, just to keep you safe and just to let you know that I don't announce my winners in the comments in that way. So please enter if you're interested in a win. <laughs> and I think that you deserve a break now. So go grab a cuppa, have a shower, whatever it is that you need to do. Thank you for um, all of your comments and your support. I hope that some of today's blether has been of interest to you. And I hope that in the next couple of weeks, you will all stay well and stitch happy. Bye folks.